This is Bill Powers with MiningStockEducation.com, and I'm joined by James Sykes, the Vice President of Exploration and Development for Appy Energy. James has been directly and indirectly involved with the discovery of over 450 million pounds of uranium in the Athabasca Basin. I last spoke to James in April of this year, and that interview is available if you'd like to go back and listen to it. In that interview, you'd be able to learn a little bit more about James's background and his approach to exploration. He's here today to give us an update on Appia's current exploration program, Appia is an ex- exploration company in the Athabasca Basin. They also hold uh, uranium and rare earths property in Elliott Lake, Ontario. So James, thank you for coming back and please give us an update of what Appy has been up to. Thank you very much, Bill. I would love to do so. So uh, since over the past six months and since we've last talked, uh, Appy has been focused on three different properties up in northern Saskatchewan. And those properties are the Loringer property in which we drilled in the winter and then the east side property in which we staked, but also the rare earth property, uh, Alsa's Lake, which we just had a news release out yesterday. So just to kind of clarify a little bit more on what we did for each property. So following up on the successful drill program that we had up at Loringer, in which six out of seven drill holes did intersect uranium mineralization, and four of those drill holes had wide intervals of uranium mineralization, which again, we're very excited about. Uh, We followed up with a uh, a ground serving a project in the in the summertime. So this project is very helpful for us in that we were able to define a lot of the geology um, up in the area and notice some structures. But we we also found some radiometric outcrops, which again uh, very exciting for us. Uh, we know that there are more areas out there that you know have radiation right at surface, so, so uh, uranium bearing zones. And some of these zones we found were very close to targets that we had previously identified as drill targets. So again, um, it's starting to paint a much better picture up at Loringer now, and with the geophysics that we flew last year and conducted in the winter, but also with the the results that we had from the drill program uh, showing us that, yes, we have uranium underground, um, and then we also have uh, the geophysics, the gravity surveys, really helped us define some structures and alteration. And now seeing what we have at surface, that we do have some of these radioactive outcrops right at surface, you know, it, it's a great property, very good property. And following up with our model of trying to find um, a near surface or at surface uranium deposit outside of the basin, this is, this is a key property for us. James, were the results so far, are they kind of consistent with the model and the theory that you're operating with? Yes, uh, I would say that they definitely are. Um, again, we're, we're trying to apply the classic... Um, well, the classic keeps changing all the time, but the classic Athabasca uranium model, uh, which is definitely very structural controlled. Now, because we're dealing with structures, um, we couldn't identify any any of the major structures. Like we saw some secondary structures that surface, but the major ones that we were after are all buried under a lot of till, and there was nothing exposed at surface there. But seeing seeing some of the geology and seeing some some of these structural alteration patterns, such as hematite and limonite. Uh, we are, you know, we're, we're seeing the systems at work, uh, the systems that we want to see. They are at work on the property. So again, it, it really helps us, um, really gives us a lot of confidence going forward with Loringer property and, and our drill targets. Will you uh, be uh, drilling on the property in 2018? Have you established what your next step is on the property? That is currently our plans. Yes, we are looking to do so, and you know, we'd be anywhere from couple thousand meters, like a thousand to a thousand meters is uh, currently in plans and in a couple new target areas that we didn't get to last winter. So we want to keep moving that property forward as much as possible because there's, it is a big property and there are a lot of beautiful areas that need to be explored with the drill. And with your uh, recent press releases, can you review that with us? Absolutely. So the recent press release was for the Alsa's Lake property which, again, northern Saskatchewan, we are north, about 30 kilometers northeast of Uranium City, so we're close to the territory's border. Alsa's Lake is historically known as a, um, a rare earth play, and you know there were samples taken from between uh, 2010 and 2013, which really emphasized some of the high-grade rare earths that we're seeing up there. So we flew a VTEM survey and radiometric survey last year, and the radiometric survey really picked up on some of these um, some of these higher levels of radiation and especially where previous mineralization was discovered it was uh, there was a big uh, big halo there basically 
but we did see some other ones around and I'd never set foot on the property so I really wanted to put the geology into play and I think that's what we we really did we were really successful up there this summer just walking around and trying to get an idea of uh, what the geology is like but also how the radiometric survey can really help us out and it did it you know we found two at least two other zones outside of the um, the main radiometric halo and then we found a couple of more zones within the main radiometric halo so we we found a lot a lot more zones that had not been discovered um, the results came back and we just press released that yesterday so in one of the areas we're, we're seeing very close to 50 percent total rare earth oxides which is actually absolutely unbelievable you know, these are world-class grades and then the other grades that we're seeing 30 percent 18 percent you know we're seeing a lot of grades that are well above two percent total rare earth oxides and what's really important about these is that these all of the samples across the board in in every zone that we found are all rich in neodymium and praseodium so those two elements are they're very critical in today's world especially when you're looking at um uh, such uh, such emerging technologies as electric vehicles, wind turbines, uh, cell phones. You know, everybody has a cell phone nowadays. Uh, computers, anything with uh, that has a magnet for processors or just needs a high-powered magnet. This is where uh, neodymium and praseodium really come into play. And there is low supply outside of China. And so the demand outside of China has starting to pick up, and we're seeing that happen. Uh, you've got companies like Linus Corp who are now producing again. Uh, Rainbow Rare Earths out in Burundi have the Gakara project, and they're producing now. Um, STL, who have Steen Comscroll down in South Africa, they're trying to get that up into production. So there is a lot of activity coming back into the rare earth space outside of outside of China. And so we would like to get a... We are focused right, well, not our main focus, but what we're going to focus on now for ALSIS is, is to try and bring this forward. Uh, we're going to really try and move this along because because we've identified so many zones at surface, we feel that we can really move this thing a lot quicker than something where we have to drill deep and drill blindly. Yeah, excellent up, uh, update. Is there anything going on at your other side property in the Athabasca Basin? The other side property at the moment, uh, not not at the moment no we are we've kind of had to let that one uh, just slip under the slip under the cracks just for the time being it's it is very deep uh, the sorry the sandstone covers very deep very thick so we'd be exploring for uh, deeply hosted uranium in this market right now it's it, it's pretty pretty hard to raise money to to put in for about you know, half a million dollars to get one drill hole but this is why we you know, we saw the conditions on the market. Well, we knew we had our own strategy going forward, thinking that if we can find a a deposit at surface, you know, something like that would go into production a lot easier than something that's underground. So this is why we actually staked um, another property east of Loringer, which is called the East Side property. And that one was staked on the basis of um, historic geophysics that identified a large radiometric halo in the area, but then also the follow-up prospecting identified um, at least three three outcrops that have well over a thousand ppm uranium, um, which appear to be along a trend. But then they've also identified a number of outcrops that have uh, between 500 to 1,000 ppm uranium and a lot of boulders, uh, probably more more boulders, I would say, than uh, than what the outcrops are, are showing up as. So. I think there's a lot of potential in this area, and so we flew a um, an airborne magnetic VLFEM and radiometric survey back in August, September. Uh, we're just simply waiting for those results to come in, and once we get them, we can analyze, and then we'll you know, we can uh, release that data as well. And again, we've we've got a lot of good confidence at that property with the the concentrations of uranium that we're just seeing right at surface. Oh, it's very encouraging. Do you expect to drill on the Alsus Lake property at all next year? We're planning for next summer. Yes, it's it's not a winter. Well, you can drill there in the winter, um, but it would take a lot of work. And again, given the market with today, 
Uh, it's probably more work than what we would like to put in. Just I, I don't see the shareholders really benefiting from us putting that that work in. It's a lot more beneficial for us to work on it in the summer. Yeah, the access is a lot easier. You know, the shareholder return on us doing that is in the summertime is much much more valuable than doing in the winter. So Loringer right now is basically our winter focus, and then uh, Alsa's Lake would be in the summer. East side until we get the results back. Um, we don't know where that will fit in yet, if we can do it in the winter or in the summer. Uh, the Elliott Lake project, um, where you have uh, proven uh, resources uh, of both uranium and rare earths, anything going on on that property? Not at the moment, but we are keeping our eyes on the markets. Again, that's a, it's more of a long-term play. It's got an upside potential for the rising rare earth and, and uranium prices. So we are keeping our eyes on, on the market conditions that if we start seeing it move towards, it doesn't have to be at the, at the stage where things become economic, but if we see it uh, moving towards that, then yes, we will definitely put a lot more focus on there and um, try to bring that up into something that can be ready for when, when the market's ready. Epi Energy is a company that I own shares of. Ticker symbol is API on the CSE and APAAF on the OTC in the U.S. The company also trades in Frankfurt, Munich, and Berlin. James, thanks for stopping by and giving us, giving us an update. You're very welcome. Thank you very much, Bill. Have yourself a great day. Thank you for listening to this Mining Stock Education podcast. Please subscribe and share with like-minded investors. Visit us on the web at miningstockeducation.com for more resources on precious metals and natural resource investing. At our website, you can also sign up for our free newsletter for interview transcripts, stock picks, and more.